What if I told you that you could use hypnosis to change the things about yourself that you've always wanted to improve? I've personally always struggled with confidence and I wanna see if hypnosis can make a real difference. And no, I am not talking about stage hypnosis. I'm talking about the kind that you can do to yourself. But first, I need to test my hypnotic susceptibility and my suggestibility. Your hypnotic susceptibility is basically how susceptible you are to being hypnotized. And after listening to the Huberman Lab episode with Dr. David Spiegel, he suggests that the eye roll test is the best way to figure this out. All you have to do is start out by softening your gaze and looking straight ahead. Then you look up at the ceiling or the sky and you try to slowly close your eyes. Based on how much of the iris you can see can be a great indicator of just how hypnotizable you are. Now, suggestibility is basically how likely you are to respond to suggestions. And this is generally enhanced when you're in a hypnotic state. There are a ton of suggestibility tests online that are really fun to try try to pull them apart. The more you try, the more stuck together they'll become. One, two, three. And let them come apart easily, effortlessly. I'm not gonna lie, that was insane. It actually worked. It seems like I'm a pretty good candidate for self-hypnosis, but at this point, I need some guidance. But there happens to be a self-hypnosis app called Reverie, and it's from Dr. Spiegel himself, so I think the next logical step is for me to test it out and see if I can be hypnotized. The app is pretty straightforward. You can select a number of different goals and there are core exercises associated with each goal. Well, that wasn't really what I expected. I'm pretty sure that I was not hypnotized. But I think this is one of those things you have to try a few times and get the hang of it. So I tried different sessions one to two times per day throughout the rest of the week. The core exercises all follow the same process. You get comfortable, have a goal or something you wanna work on in mind, transition into a focused and relaxed state, do some visualization, revisit a goal, and come out of the hypnotic state. Sounds easy enough, right? But there were three major problems that I experienced. You know, I think this app would be really great for people who know what they're doing and they know how to enter a state of self-hypnosis. I know it guides you, but I just feel like it's really fast. Like, I can't relax that quickly. This sounds like a me problem, so I just need to learn how to calm down. I do not think I was hypnotized. Honestly, I don't really know what I'm supposed to feel. Yeah, I'm not sold on this. I feel good. I feel relaxed. A little bit sleepy or like kind of out of it, but like not out of it. Does that make sense? That makes no sense. That felt a lot different than yesterday. I am not resonating with all of these talk tracks. To me, I think it highlights the need to be able to customize what it says, but that also means that I think I need to do the true form of self-hypnosis, which is to hypnotize myself and not rely on an audio recording. If I were to come up with my own session, I would wanna focus on something like improving my confidence. I get really nervous when I meet or interact with new people. I, I kind of feel like whatever it is I have to say doesn't matter. And I know that's not true, but I would just rather keep to myself. That's what I would really like to work on. I love that it looks like I'm wearing some fancy thing, but no, this is a blanket from Target. <laughs> but I have been looking all over the internet. I've been looking at lots of YouTube videos, lots of websites to try and get some of the questions that I have about hypnosis answered. And I finally found somebody that I can talk to. His name is Steven Burns. He has a YouTube channel called Mind School, and he also has a 12 hour course on Udemy all about self-hypnosis. Obviously I need to take that. So we're gonna talk tomorrow and for the first time, I feel a sense of hope that I might actually find some success on this whole self-hypnosis journey. Maybe it's just me, but it seems like all of the audio recordings that I listen to, they just assume that you're able to enter a state of hypnosis so quickly and effortlessly. Uh, the kind of audio hypnosis, they do just presuppose that you can just go straight into this wonderful state of absorption, this lovely state of relaxation. But for a lot of people, that, that does uh, pose some challenges. So one way to get around it is actually to go through what I call a settling process before you start. And just, you know, spend maybe five, ten minutes just simply just breathing. It's a nice little segue into the self-hypnosis itself. Over the last few days, I've been practicing just relaxing. I mean, it's not exactly natural for me to go from working or being distracted, doing something, to just, boom, being relaxed. And I'm liking that there's no time limit. I can take however long I need, which apparently is a while. 
How do you know when you've entered a hypnotic state? Two things, that there are, there are lots of indicators, but two of the main things. First of all, that, that state of absorption where you're just in this wonderful place of flow, but also your imagination. If your imagination starts to go wild and starts to, to, to really go to places you wouldn't normally go, then again, that's a great indication. So this course actually presents roughly the same hypnotic process as the Reverie app. Maybe I shouldn't be all that surprised. So right now I'm focusing on how to transition into a hypnotic state or a trance. I think these terms are used interchangeably, but I'm realizing that it is important to practice getting into this hypnotic state so that way you can identify when you're there. Then you can add on the next piece of the puzzle. If I manage to induce self-hypnosis, how do I know if the session was effective? When you do the session, you stir things up. So you come out of the session and it feels like something is different, but you don't quite yet have a conscious description of what that change is. And you've just got to give it a little bit of time until that change makes its way up to your, your, your conscious awareness. I just completed my first true unguided self-hypnosis attempt. Whew. But wow, the, the difference that it made putting in a lot of work up front. I felt so relaxed and then I noticed that my mental state was shifting. And I finally hit that point where I'm like, okay, I think I can transition into what I wanna work on. And what I've written down, through each experience and interaction, I become more confident. And I just repeated that in my head over and over again. And then I started thinking about what that would feel like. What would that look like? I have no idea how long that was. I feel amazing. I do feel like something has shifted and that's kind of hard to put into words, but you know, I just have to see what happens next. Just just give it a bit of time, you know, give it a few days or maybe even give it give it a week. There's, there's lots of things you can monitor, your, your feelings, your behaviours, am I behaving differently? You can also become aware of your relationship to certain things, how you respond uh, to certain situations, uh, and also what you believe. So it's been a few weeks since I did my self-hypnosis session and there have been a few changes. They're very subtle. When I go to yoga, for instance, normally when you're waiting before a class, sometimes the teacher will be like, oh, say hi to your neighbor. And a lot of times I'll just like look down at my mat or I'll kind of pretend like I'm focused and like meditating or something. I'm not, I'm just shy. But these last few times I've actually said hi to my neighbor. I guess I just cared a little less about what people thought. But I think more notably, just like in this last week, I started a brand new project at work with brand new people that I haven't met. Normally I'm a little more reserved and I'm just trying to kind of feel people out, but I've been more myself and it's felt really good. While none of these changes are drastic by any means, there are steps in the right direction. And I think if I continue down this path, I mean, anything's possible, right? So do I think hypnosis is legit? To my surprise, I do. But what I didn't expect was just how much work I was gonna have to put in to learn how to hypnotize myself. Not only is it important to learn how to relax, but also how to induce that state of hypnosis and how to be able to recognize when you're there. And that doesn't even include how to phrase the change that you wanna make within yourself. When you're in a state of hypnosis, your brain is more plastic. It's more open to new ideas and suggestions. So you have to learn how to be able to best take advantage of that. If you're wanting to approach it as like a quick fix, don't waste your time. You have to put in the work. I hope you enjoyed this video and I've picked out a few others that I think you might enjoy. So I will see you in the next one.